for them and I speak for us and our families. So uh, we look at the specific um, health disparity of infant and maternal mortality and morbidity and how to address that as a health disparity through the New York State Health Exchange. And we found that that is a way for women to really hold on to the information in terms of seeing how it will benefit their families directly and understanding that that is a, an issue that addresses both them and their families throughout the life course. So I'm going to talk to you today about um, what we're doing in terms of um, how we're advocating for this at Raising Women's Voices. So let's start with the biggest problem that women are facing, and that's cost. In 2010, 45 million women across the United States reported that because of cost, they didn't fill a prescription, they skipped a recommended test or follow-up treatment, um, they did not go to a doctor when they had a medical problem, and they did not see a specialist when it was needed. Um, and this is even true for women who actually have health insurance, and, but they can't afford to use it so because the deductibles or the co-pays are too high. So the challenges are just a bit insurmountable for women. We have some stories uh, that we've done. We did a series of listening sessions when we first took on this cause around health reform. And um, I'm just going to use the story of a 40-year-old woman who, um, African-American woman, two daughters. She works in the office right next to ours, breast cancer survivor. She used the quote, I've lived and worked in this country my entire life. Why don't I have health insurance when I need it? She was kicked off when she presented for breast cancer. So um, this, is, this is also people who get dropped because you know, their coverage, they don't want to get cut, the, the insurance companies don't want to cover them, or the economy is just bad. So um, the Affordable Care Act is great in that it will help you no matter what your age or income. So it helps uh, women and families who are uninsured but can't afford health care. It has help for uh, women and families who, are insur who have insurance who that doesn't cover what they need or it's too expensive. And it covers, as I said, the lifespan. So what we need to know is that there is no longer any gender rating in the Affordable Care Act, which means that being a woman is no longer a pre-existing condition for health care coverage. Isn't that a great idea? <laughs> uh, Big victory. Uh, exactly. Uh, and we also found out that insurance had coverage limits that left women on the hook for devastating medical expenses that they could not afford. Um, and also, we also need women to know that they are guaranteed maternity coverage and contraceptive coverage without any extra cost. And other benefits for older women like mammograms without copay, so it closes the donut hole so they don't fall through the cracks in terms of receiving the care, the care that they need. Uh, we're going to talk about prevention. And uh, just to kind of back up a little bit, Raising Women's Voices is doing a campaign called Countdown to Coverage. And we're counting down the coverage of, that women will receive as of August 1st. So this is a, a presentation that centers around that. So um, all new insurance plans in the exchange are required to cover key preventive care services without charging us co-pays or deductibles. Um, examples of the women's services already included are mammograms, pap smears, anemia, and hepatitis B screenings for pregnant women. Also, blood pressure, diabetes and cholesterol, uh, testing, quit uh, counseling about quitting smoking, losing weight, um, choosing healthy foods, treating depression, and reducing alcohol use. So what this means for New York women is an estimated 1.3 million New York women will have gained coverage for these services, which is very exciting for us. And what, uh, how we're looking at this in terms of how it addresses racial and gender disparities is some of the new preventative services that will, covered as I, will be covered, as I told you, as of August 1st, which is comprehensive contraceptive care, um, the annual Well Woman's Care Exam, screening for sexually transmitted diseases, breastfeeding counseling and support, screening for gestational diabe diabetes, again, looking at the mortality, the maternal mortality piece of that, and most importantly, screening and counseling for intimate partner violence which is something that I'm not certain most insurance companies either cover or even acknowledge in their plans. So right now, we are counting down to the new preventive health care services that women will be getting as of August 1st. Um, this applies to all new insurance plans and to existing plans when enough changes are made to them to qualify them as new. Uh, you've probably heard a lot about the contraceptive coverage requirement that came through HHS this past summer. 
And it's great that women have access to birth control. As a woman of reproductive age, that's amazing. Um, and not have to pay for the out-of-pocket costs for that. Um, this also coverage for reproductive and contraceptive services also includes, it includes uh, birth control pills, but also IUDs and tubal ligations, which are really cost prohibitive for women who want that uh, service. And what we know is that when women can plan and space their pregnancies, they have healthier babies and healthier lives. And somehow that big issue gets lost in all of the controversy around the Affordable Care Act. And so it's worth remembering when we know that for every $1 spent on contraceptive services, we save $4 on pregnancy care for women. So this makes good sense for both the nation's pocketbooks and the women's pocketbooks. See, we can share it. We can share power here. Um, keeping our kids healthy. So um, what is covered for children? Well baby visits, immunizations, screenings for autism and lead exposure, um, vision and hearing tests, obesity screening, drug and alcohol assessments for adolescents, which is also something that people don't talk about much. You can go through the entire list on um, www.healthcare.gov to find the full list. We're also providing protection. Protection is also very important for women. So sometimes the insurance companies have unfair company practices. Um, so what we're find, what through this campaign, insurers cannot cancel your policy if you get sick or make a mistake in your insurance application. Um, insurers cannot set lifetime dollar limits on the amount of the medical care that they will cover, and there will be no annual limits starting in 2014. And already 2.5 million New York women are protected under this. There's no coverage for kids, no, no coverage denials for kids with pre-existing conditions. We have a nurse in our office building. Her name, her name is Nurse Abby. Her grandniece was born with hearing loss. Do you know that the family's health insurer denied coverage for treatment, calling it a pre-existing condition? Oh, <laughs> this baby was only one month old. She was born with this condition. Yes, I know. So we also want to ensure that more of your um, health premium dollars actually go to medical care. That makes sense. So insurance companies now have to give rebates to consumers if they don't spend at least 80% of the premium dollars they collect on actually providing medical care. They will be forced to spend less on CEO salaries, marketing, and overhead. And they have to make this information public. We have to know about it so that we can make better insurance choices. And under this, an estimated 4.6 million New Yorkers have already received protection under this provision. And it also provides peace of mind for mothers. So adult children, can stay on their family's health insurance plans up to the age of 26. This younger, the young adults do not have to live at home, which is great. They can also be married and still covered under their family's, their, their family's plan and be dependent or be a dependent for tax purposes. So this is very important for young women of their in reproductive age. And already with this benefit, 150,000 New York adults have benefited. We also know that in New York State, Currently, the health insurance, um, a child can stay on a family's health insurance plan up to the age of 29, but that was done through the COBRA policy, which is actually a more expensive plan for both the family and the employer and the individual. So um, it's very important that we have this condition in the health exchange, although we already have that coverage. So looking ahead to 2014, maternity care must be covered. No charging women, more for men more than you, you know than you charge men for probably i mean it's gender rating it's unfair it's unequal um and our countdown to coverage campaign is already underway and uh we're very excited to share this with you so what we're going to do what it have what it means for us in new york state is new state insurance exchanges are due to open in january 2014 uninsured and moderate income individuals and families can shop for private insurance made affordable by federal subsidies and more low-income people will be eligible for Medicaid coverage, which my colleague Erin is going to speak to you more about. And we're going to talk about the New York State Health Exchange. So, of course, as you said, Senator Stewart Cousins, um, it was passed by an executive order. Yay, Governor Cuomo. Um, it's expected to provide affordable health insurance to more than one million uninsured New Yorkers. 
and we have to really be at the forefront of the decisions that need to be made and we're going to make sure that women of color are at the table. And that's what I have to present to you on Kaplan and coverage and what Raising Women's Voices is doing. Excellent. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Jasmine. You're welcome. And